super cold. So I was in Turkey a couple of weeks ago. It was much warmer than this. I thought let's go back and talk about what type of gear I use for commercial shoots but also for getting my films on Netflix. Clap, clap to sync. So do you see this? I'm in Turkey. Kind of pretty, right? Yeah, sun is about to set and uh, I'm just gonna show you what my setup is. That's an easy rig. That is uh, Blackmagic Ursa. That's the setup. Works like this. You just drag this down, you put it on the handle, and you don't have to hold it. How good is that? This takes off all the weight of a cinema camera. This is the thing that everybody uses that works professionally. So I would choose a camera like this over a small GH5 that we're shooting this on just because of the simple and ease of use and the high quality that you get. With this camera right now, you get Blackmagic RAW, which is like editing ProRes basically, but in RAW. So 4.6K is massive in Cinema DNG, but it's also small. So it's like a compressed RAW format that a lot of the stuff is being done processing wise in the camera, so the system doesn't have to do it. That makes this a beast. But other than that, this little mic here, Sennheiser 416, it's the mic that most documentary filmmakers use professionally. It's a great mic for on-camera use, it's a great mic for booming, it's a great mic for getting like isolated sounds if you want to have like sound effects. It's a great mic for interviews, most of the stuff. It's like one grand, so that's expensive, right? But if you want to have a great filmmaking setup, this is what I use for like Netflix docs, it's what I use for advertising. So it's basically the kit that you, all you need to make like high-end productions. If you have a camera set up and you just put everything into lenses and camera but no in the audio department, that is just stupid and naive. So take care of the audio. The Sunken Cost Lab with the PDR from uh, Electrosonics is also what I use together with this. V-Lock batteries, uh, awesome battery that you can use for lights as well, like the light we have over there from Westcott. Okay, so this is the difference between having a light at a sunset and not having a light at a sunset. Kind of a big deal, right? You don't see much of me, do you? Yeah, these are on the heavy side. You shouldn't go over 100, I guess 90. 90 something uh, watts hours because then you won't be able to bring it on flights. I use the SSD drives for like documentary shoots because it's convenient to have one drive. Uh, that's something that I think a lot of people don't think is worthwhile but Blackmagic gave it to me so I'm using it because it's more convenient. I would probably not have bought it if I didn't realize how useful it was on shoots. So it's definitely something that you want to rent when you want to have a, like a package that's easy to go to post-production. And SSDs are so much better to edit from. Uh, other than that we have like small rig has these adapting things for the mic. So if I'm shooting this person, uh, I'm getting his headshot but I want that person talking, I can just flick this around and manually just focus in on the person that's talking but I'm still getting the shot of the other person. That's a really important thing I think for docs. I think most people don't do that and then having a camera mic doesn't really make sense uh, because you don't have the flexibility. Other than that, the handle is from wooden camera and I think you should use any handle but this is, is a decent one, uh, it just does the job. And then for lens, I use the Sigma 18-35, to 35. for this shoot I use a polarizer, so that's an important thing. I have a viewfinder that is the Blackmagic one, the standard one, uh, and then on the back here I have a sync device which is called Tentacle Sync. I use that uh, together with the Electrosonics PDR to get everything automated and in sync with timecode. And that works really well. I guess that's like the general setup here. I don't think there's much else. Uh, I do use CFast cards as well, which are in here. Uh, but other than that, like this is a setup that you can do like amazing work with, especially if you add the, the lab to this. I cannot recommend this enough. 
if you want to go professional, this is a good starting point, I feel. Because this is not the most expensive camera, and it's not the most expensive Easy Rig either, it's the Minimax. And this is a Rykot windshield. It's a decent one, it doesn't handle the most like brutal winds, but for the most part it's fine. Let me know in the comment section what you think uh, makes a good documentary setup. I just think the cinema cameras, if you want a camera that can handle like having internal NDs and it has this amazing format like Blackmagic RAW or ProRes that you can edit straight away and it has like an easy way to switch from like slow mode to normal mode. Like this is a camera that does that and it creates like good audio through XLRs with phantom power. That's why I use a camera like this. But let me know what you use and, and why you haven't bought a camera like this or why you would never go back to using a smaller camera after buying this. Okay, so I got this question. Which camera do you think makes the most cinematic images? Vic Berkvist. You know, it comes down to so much more than having the right camera. I would say any camera can achieve cinematic looking images. That's not what cinematic uh, is about, choosing the right camera. It comes down to like choosing light, uh, choosing a perspective and, and having a, a look to a story, packages, packaging it in a certain way uh, that deepens the immersion from the audience so if if you want to get people to feel it to be cinematic you could do it just handheld or you could do it all on a gimbal that's not really the the thing that makes it cinematic even though for the most part people would attribute it to the gimbal type of, of scenario uh, but shooting it on a vhs camera can be cinematic if you do it in a certain way it comes down to how you tell the story. So even though like working on high dynamic range type of cameras, like the cinema quality type of cameras, you do get a more cinematic looking image out of the box, out of them. But it's much more important to think about the other stuff. Because just buying a camera or having a camera, like that doesn't matter. It, that doesn't create cinematic looking images. It's the DOP and it's the storyteller that does that. Uh, so it doesn't matter what camera it is really, but of course an Alexa has a much more cinematic look to it than most. You can on a budget get close to that by using a camera like I am now, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K. Those cameras have low compression, they have high dynamic range, so you have this tonality in, in, a, in a room where you can see like from me now in, in this red you can have a lot of details still in that and then in the background it's lit like these types of cameras are really good because they don't throw away a lot of the information which for instance uh, like the dslr or the mirrorless cameras do they do throw away everything because they compress the image and they add for instance sharpness and, and they bake everything into the image so that you lose a lot of stuff for you to to work with in in the post but it an essential part of making anything cinematic is to expose as close as you can to the final product. So if you want it to be dark and moody, don't go and over light things. You need to think about protecting the highlights, never overexposing them, rather underexposing the rest of the image. And that's where you set the cameras apart, really. When you have a certain type of camera would not be able to handle you under, uh, underexposing the main part of the image, for instance while still having, uh, for instance, the, the highlights not being clipped. So let's just look at this camera, what happens if I just dial it down a bit. So since this camera has so much dynamic range, you're still going to have a lot of detail everywhere, even on me, and it's not going to fall apart in post. Uh, I will probably be able to pop myself a little bit. I don't see much light in my face, but this, oops, this shoulder here has a little bit. So you could actually get a pretty nice looking image off of a camera like this. And this is just a pocket 4K camera. So it's not anything special. Anything can be done on cameras that don't compress and it's easier on those. 
but any camera can achieve it cinematic uh, like cinematic storytelling that's not really an issue it comes down to you the storyteller to tell a story cinematic